another beautiful day here at the beach. And it's life is short by the beach house. So here we are today. I have a couple family favorites on deck for today. So let me get you guys up here and we will get started. Yes. How is everyone on this beautiful day? Hold on a second. Oh, I got going here. Technology. Hold on. You know, Facebook updated their, uh, you know, their interface. Who likes it and who doesn't? <laughs> but so far, I'm just waiting for it to bring you up here. Okay, so today on the docket, we are going to make chicken cordon bleu casserole. So I made chicken cordon bleu, family fa uh, favorite, classic recipe that I think everybody grew up on and everyone loves. And if not, you didn't grow up on it, you've had it at plenty of banquets. <laughs> but it's always a hit. So chicken cordon bleu, for those that don't know, you take a chicken breast, you usually split it and put the ham and Swiss cheese in it or on top of it and make a yummy chicken dish. So we are going to do that in a casserole today with all kinds of yummy things. But I'm also going to make one of our family favorites, a zucchini side dish um, that my dad used to always make on the beach whenever we were barbecuing. He'd make it in the foil and put it on the barbecue. So that's what I'm going to make with this dish for today for something green and easy and quick for those that are homeschooling and just want something quick and new and different. That's what I'm going to be making today. So my new Facebook here, trying to get you guys up so I can see you. Hey Florence. Hey Lindy. How are you? There they are. Now I can see you. Okay, so we're going to get started here with our sauce for our casserole. So in the pan here, I'm going to get started with our, we're going to make our cream sauce to go in our casserole. And I'm going to start with three tablespoons of butter because, you know, every good sauce starts with butter, right? And get that going in there. And to that, I'm going to add um, the garlic and the shallot. So I've got a uh, uh, this was like one kind of medium to large size sh uh, shallot diced up. We'll put that in there. Okay, got that going in there. Then we'll put the garlic in. And I have about, oh, three cloves or so of garlic going in. Call for a tablespoon, but I was just crushing cloves. So I'm going to get that started here. Oh, yum. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so yummy. And to that, I have our diced ham. I actually bought the ham steaks um, and diced them myself because the little pre-diced stuff that you can buy, it was too small. I mean, I want you to know that there's ham in the dish. And then, of course, beautiful Costco chicken that I have pre-shredded. Uh, I didn't make. Of course, you could make your own. I have high, half of a diced red pepper here that I diced again in pretty de uh, decent sized chunks so you can see it when it's in the in the casserole and then one cup of frozen peas here currently thawing out <laughs> getting ready for the casserole oh. oh my gosh this looks good already because onions and garlic smell so yummy so how is everyone today Lindy how are you are you sitting outside in your backyard hanging out Probably. You know what day it is? Today it is National Dog Day! And all of you with dogs, you know that our beloved Doberman passed away about a year ago and we are desperately missing her, especially on Dog Day. So I'm trying to talk um, my husband here into getting a dog on Dog Day. You can see I don't know how well it's going over, but I'm ready. Would that be a good way to celebrate Dog Day? To get another Do uh, Doberman? I think so. And also because I saw a really cute one come up on the rescue website um, and I was, you know, heartstrings. And in that case, that one, her owner passed away and this poor Doberman got left with no family. So, you know, I'll see if I can work on him. <laughs> but I am missing having a doggy today on National Dog Day. Okay, so back to my sauce here. So I've got the... Um, the the garlic and the shallot going back there, and then I'm going to add about a half, half a cup of white wine to deglaze the pizza here. 
and get that going. Half a cup, oh, about half a cup. There we go. And the bottle of wine that got chosen for today is the one that wouldn't fit in my wine fridge. <laughs> wouldn't quite fit. Um, so I had to pick one to pull it out. So that's who won the wine today. Okay, so we've got our wine in there, and then um, I'm going to whisk in the flour here. So I've got my about three tablespoons of flour going in. Let me grab a whisk here real quick. Okay. Oh my gosh, it smells good already. Yum! Get my garlic moved around in here. Oh my gosh. Smells yummy. This kind of, as it is, would be called a beurre blanc sauce with just wine and butter and onion and garlic. This would be beurre blanc. But I'm going to thicken it up here to make a creamier sauce for our casserole. Yum! Okay. So I've got our flour worked it and then we'll let it cook a little bit to get rid of that raw flour taste. We don't want that. So we'll let that cook there for a second. And make sure I get everything in there. Um, I'm going to put a little salt and pepper. So I will grind some pepper in there. You know, I don't want to be shy when I'm doing it with the pepper because I love a lot of pepper especially in a dish like this. And a little bit of salt here. Get that going in. Oh my gosh. Let's see what's happening here. See our flowers tightening up our sauce here. But I want to get rid of that flour taste before I start stirring in our milk here. And in the milk today I actually have, it's actually half, half and half just because I had some. <laughs> So COVID co uh, cooking, we use what we have. And I happen to have some half and half, so it's going in. So why not? Oh. Well, I'm gonna start whisking in here our uh, milk. And then we're gonna let that thicken up while we get tossed with our other things here. So here we go, my two cups of milk. That's actually one cup of half and half. Gonna so start whisking it in here. It's going to be yummy. I'm always one, even if the recipes call for a can of condensed soup, I would tend to make my own like this, to make my own sauce. Uh, but I'm not against the canned soups. They have their place. If you want to make this, you know, in a couple minutes faster, then you can do that too with the canned soup. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to let that cook, and while I let that um, cook a little bit, I'm going to toss together the rest of our casserole ingredients here. So to our bowl, I'm going to put our about two cups or so, maybe two and a half, of our chicken that is cooked. Um, Costco, thank you. And then I'm going to put about a cup here of diced ham, and then to that I will add the red pepper. Yum. I'm going to add the peas last because I don't want them to get all mushy. And then I have um, about a cup and a half here of Gruyere cheese, which is like a nutty cheese. Um, it's like Swiss, so if you wanted to substitute Swiss cheese, you could. Uh, but this is, gru is Gruyere, and it just has kind of a nutty, you know, flavor that is so good, especially in casseroles. So... Let me start to stir that up here. Oh my gosh, looks good already. Yes. And I added the red pepper. The recipe actually called for a can, a jar of pimentos. And I thought, eh, I'll put something red. And then these peppers were so pretty in the store that I just grabbed a pepper. And that's about half of a big red pepper in there, really just for color. <laughs> so our keep an eye on this so it doesn't get too crazy over here but I want to let that tighten up okay. so 
while that is going, um, also to our meat and um, cheese here, I'm going to add some pasta. So I have pre just pre-cooked the pasta like the second before we went live. So this is about, uh, oh, it's about three quarters of a bag of pasta. And I use the gluten-free kind because that's just what I like. Uh, but you can use whatever you have in your pantry and mix it in. Oh my gosh. Yum! So this is going to be so good. All the chicken cordon bleu ingredients in a new way here. Oh my gosh, this smells good already. I haven't bought a Costco chicken in so long and I'm, it is really good. So moist. I don't know what they do to them, but boy was it yummy. Okay, so I mixed up my bowls here. I'm just going to use this bowl for my next dish. But while I wait for my sauce to thicken up there, we're going to move on to our side dish. So I'm going to just move this out of the way here for a second. And our next dish, um, like I said, was one of my dad's signature things when he was cooking. And I just remember him making it when we went to barbecue on the beach. And he would take um, zucchini. So I have two, and everyone has so much zucchini, zucchini um, flying out of their garden, so I thought I'd give you another easy, quick re uh, recipe that the kids will like too. So this is two grated zucchini that I just grated on the hand grater real quick. And then um, I've got one yellow zucchini just because it was there and it was, and it was pretty. And then I'm going to add about... This is about three quarters of a cup, and again, I grated the onion. So this is a red onion grated, so that's going in. Oh my gosh, this is so good. And then I'm going to mix that together a little bit here. And use this same spoon I got going on here. And just get our zucchinis mixed up. This is actually the bowl I was going to use for my casserole. <laughs> got started with what was in front of me here. So, get the zucchini. That yellow zucchini just kind of went away because um, the green. But anyway, it's in there. Another way to get vegetables into your kidlins. And then I'm going to put about, oh, it's about a cup of extra sharp cheddar cheese or whatever cheese you have on hand will work for this dish. That's why this is such a great side dish. Now, you could also put bacon in this herbs, you know, whatever you have goes in with zucchini, 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 but this is just how we made it. I'm going to put a tablespoon of seasoned pepper, and I'm going to put about probably like a teaspoon or so of seasoned salt, because zucchini is very watery. It needs something to give it some flavor. Okay. Sauce. Oh my gosh. Sauce is looking yummy. Turn that down a little bit while I finish this one. And then this dish, that's it. Some cheese and some salt and pepper, some onion, and it's delicious. It is so yummy when you get this cooked. So I'm gonna put this in a baking dish and I have it right here, ready to go. And I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of spray here. And then I will put our, hold on, stack up my things here out of the way so you guys can see. Hey Instagrammers, how are you guys? So I'm going to spray my dish here with a little bit of magic spray and then put in our zucchini side dish that was so simple. And again, if the kids can help you, they can grate the cheese, grate the zucchini, and you're ready to go. Then you bake this oh, about 45 minutes or so. I usually start it covered and then uncover it uh, toward the end so it gets crispy on top. Now I'm going to put some, a little bit of, I actually grated some Asiago because that's what I had. Some Asiago cheese, Parmesan cheese. Now if you're a breadcrumb top per, uh, person, you could do that too. I'm not, but you could and could go on top of this. So this one I was going to take a little bit of freshly grated. Of course I grated it myself because remember we grate our own cheese. Don't buy the pre-grated stuff because it doesn't melt and it's not as good. So I'm going to put some Asiago here on top of this, plus 
Asiago cheese has a very strong flavor, so it'll give this a little more flavor. And then that's that. I'm going to put a little bit of cheddar on top so you know what's inside it. It's always nice to know what's inside it. And boom, zucchini side dish in like five minutes or less. So that's a yummy one. So back to our sauce here that's going to go in our cordon bleu. Oh my gosh. This smells delicious. I'm going to make sure I get everything in my sauce here. So let's see. Um, Okay, I'm going to turn the heat off here and pull it off the heat and I'm going to add a half a cup of mayo. So I'm going to get that out of this cup with this. <laughs> so let's do this here. Half a cup of mayo. And then I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. So a healthy squirt of that and a little bit of nutmeg. Now a little bit of nutmeg goes a long way. So just a teeny, teeny bit, a pinch. I think the recipe calls for an eighth of a teaspoon, so I actually could measure it just for camera's sake. So this is a quarter, so half of a quarter is what I'm going to put in here, so basically a pinch. So we're going to put a pinch of nutmeg in. Yum! Who wants some of this? Smells delicious. So I'm going to whisk in here our mayo and the nutmeg and the mustard. Oh, yum! This looks so good. And I'm just going to taste it, taste it real quick for salt and pepper before I pour it into our big di dish here. And see. Oh my gosh, that, that's good. Actually needs more pepper for my taste. I'm going to use the seasoned pepper and give it another hit of that. Oh my gosh, it's good though. Very good. Okay, I don't want to like over salt this because there's salt in the ham. So, and there's salt in the cheese. So, remember that when you're going to mix something together like this, not to get too heavy on the salt. So, I'm going to take this sauce. Look at how yummy this sauce looks. Yum! And we are going to dump it in here. Oh my goodness. Of course I have my big pan. Let's see if I can get this all out of here gracefully. I'm dumping my pan in. Here's my Instagrammers today. A bunch of you on there. Easy back to school dinner here. It's gonna be delish. So I'm gonna mix my sauce in here. Oh my goodness. Yes! Now, just in case the sauce got too thick or I felt like it was going to need a little more liquid, I saved a cup of the cooking, the pasta liquid, which I usually always do because you just never know if you're going to need a little bit more for your sauce, depending on how it turns out. But this looks like it's going to be nice and wet, so I don't think we're going to need to add the, the pasta water that I saved, but I did save some just in case. Oh my gosh, you guys. This looks good. Yeah, I know, my sister. So I'm going to put in a cup of frozen peas that have been starting to thaw and stir those in. So we have a little bit of red with our red pepper and a little bit of peas, a little bit of green. And then we have this yummy and easy, I mean, you guys, it took like, what, 10 minutes? So an easy, quick family casserole that everybody should like, that the kids should like too. Yes. Okay, so we got that mixed in. Now because there's only one kid who lives here, we are going to make this in um, two pans so we can give some away here because we have plenty, plenty of, I'm going to put this in front of me, I'll do one of these at a time. I'm going to spray the pan. So here is a giveaway meal or a freezer meal. So if you have a small family like that, I do, you could cook one and eat it for tonight and then freeze the other one and then boom you have dinner in the freezer for another night so i'm going to i don't know it's very he heavy get this in here half of this in one pan and half of it in the other oh my gosh now this re this recipe too called for a breadcrumb topping but i just don't like them i'm not a fan 
So I am not going to do the breadcrumb topping, but you could. Now you could use breadcrumbs and a little cheese, or you could use saltine crackers, Ritz crackers, um, whatever you like to top things casseroles with. If you like the crunchy topping, go for it. <laughs> and that's what I would do. Um, but the recipe did call for it. I think I'm going to have plenty here because this one is going to be full. And I have plenty for the next one. But to finish this, I am just going to put a little bit of my Asiago cheese that I grated myself so it's going to get nice and melty and just sprinkle a little cheese on top but you could do breadcrumbs like I said Ritz crackers crushed up whatever you like and there we go chicken cordon bleu casserole ready to go yum so let me rinse off my hands real quick and we'll do our birthday shout outs let's see how is the hurricane hool my sister is in the path of the hurricane, so they have their generator uh, locked up, rocked, rocking and rolling, ready to go to try and keep the refrigerator on if they lose power. Um, but of course, if they lose power, they lose their internet too, so you must be okay for right now because you're online. <laughs> so our birthday shout outs for today, doo -doo -doo -doo, we have a few. Happy birthday shout outs today to my list here. Uh, Fawn Peterson, happy birthday to you, dear. Hope you guys are doing well. Back in California, awesome. And then Shannon Kimbrough, dear friend, her birthday yesterday, and her twin sis sister, so happy birthday to you guys. We miss you so much. They were our neighbors, but they haven't been for a long time now. And then Juanita Kaufman, happy birthday to you. It was your birthday yesterday, so I wish you happy birthday. I love you. I wish we could see you soon. I would love to. And uh, besides Dog Day today, it is also Cherry Popsicle Day. So if you're looking for something for dessert, it's Cherry Popsicle Day. And then tomorrow, because I just couldn't resist for tomorrow, it is Red Wine Day. So tomorrow you could make your chicken cordon bleu casserole and have some red wine with it to celebrate Red Wine Day. And then our giveaway for today, I couldn't resist. So if I pick a name who's not local, you won't be winning this today. I'll pick somebody else, but check these out. It's Labor Day next weekend. If you can believe it, it's almost September. Check these out. I just thought these were so cool. I had to get these. These are Oreos with red, white, and blue cream inside. I mean, how cool are these? I got home last night and Gary was about to dive in to these. I'm like, no, no, no. They're the giveaway for the show tomorrow. And they have flags and they have Olympic rings and they have red, white, and blue cream inside. So I just thought those were totally cute. And with back to school and everyone home, it might be fun to have a nice treat. So, oh, who says it's gonna miss her good. Okay, so here we go. First winner of the Oreo, Patriotic Oreos, goes to, do, 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 do. Hold on, let me get a name out here, a local name. Christina Clark, Christina Clark, you winner, winner. I will swing by and drop off your patriotic Oreos. And our second winner today, do, 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 do. oh, can't win, you're not local, Me Megan, that was you. <laughs> but there'll be a crushed up mess of nothing if I mail these to, uh, to you. Hold on, these are all people who don't live here. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta find one who lives here. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Erica Lopez, she lives here. You win, winner, winner. It's my girl, so patriotic Oreos for you. So, hope you guys are doing well. Remember, there's only two things you can control, your effort and your attitude. So, pick a good one and always do your best. I will put the recipe here on Facebook below in the comments, and I will also put it, you can find these on our YouTube channel, Ventura Real Estate, the, real, the recipes are there too, so please subscribe to our YouTube channel, we're trying to get to a thousand and we're almost there, uh, so we appreciate you watching, if you've commented or liked on these videos, you are in my drawing for the giveaways, and we appreciate you watching, we are live on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and we love seeing you guys here live, so we... Um, Appreciate you and hope you're having a great day and you visit us at GaryandLisa.com, your real estate edge for any real estate questions or needs you have. We are here for that too. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on Saturday.